Hello my soccer universe to a potentially ill-timed review of uh, La Liga and Liga Portugal ill-timed because I will probably heap some praise on Benfica who are playing tonight in the first makeup game of the season and yeah I just uh, decided to do it now uh, because tomorrow in the morning I will not be able to do a video so we'll see but you know at least we get to see a slightly uneven table. But you saw it in, in the title. We actually have uh, two big storylines, in one for each league. I mean, uh, starting in Portugal, yes, Benfica is all great. We had already a clash between Porto and Sporting, which got rather lopsided, although the game never really was up until a red card in the end. But both of them then lost to promoted teams, which in Portugal this does not have i have not seen this in a long 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 time that both supposed big boys although i really think that benfica has a big chance this season uh, especially with uh roger schmidt on at the helm watch this space i think benfica might be for real this season uh, i've seen a lot of them in the champions league qualification the way they took apart dinamo kiev uh was just really 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 impressive and I think we will see more from Benfica. So yeah, uh, early on it seems like Sporting already knocked out of the title race. Um, Porto a little bit struggling as well, but it never discount Porto. And Benfica at the moment still flawless with a game less though. Uh, over in Spain, gotta say it looks very much like a Madrid-Barcelona uh, title race. Both teams in the past two weeks more or less in lockstep with each other. I really have to say that uh, both of them starting to look good, but I don't see anyone else challenging. Yes, Athletic Bilbao had a really good start to the season. They, uh, we had some fun with Real Betis, of course, although they are also in some uh, potential financial trouble, uh, similar to the Barcelona ilk. Uh, Atletico Madrid, no. <laughs> as simple as that, despite them getting an ugly win yesterday, but no. And yeah, so the big story to me, I mean, all of these are not really surprising. For me, the big story is what a train wreck Sevilla is already at this stage in the season. Uh, getting Having two games against uh, promoted teams, already losing their opener against uh, at, us, at Osasuna, although I think you can lose there. But having two games to newly promoted teams are getting a single point out of those that spells major, major, major trouble. And I think uh, unless something happens in the transfer market, which I doubt, because Sevilla is a little bit, they almost are uh, United-esque in their approach to, 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 to the market. Uh, every, you know, the signings are all good, but they don't make a sense as a whole. And uh, Lopetegui does not seem to be uh, getting it right. And he already was an unpopular manager overall. So yeah, those are my thoughts from uh, both two leagues. I would say we'll jump at the results. We'll start in Portugal. As I said, the big round, the big fixture. And I did watch it uh, because it dovetailed so nicely was of course Porto against Sporting. It was especially in the first of a rather rather tight affair. Um, tense and emotions were uh, the boiling point for most of the time and it took then a rather odd goal by Evan Nielsen where you know uh, I think Taremi had the goalie crash in into the and the ball rolls forward and Evan Nielsen taps it home. Uh, it needed such an odd goal to get a goal there because I think Sporting actually was really well in that game. Uh, Porto, of course, the more proactive uh, team as the home team. And I think uh, Sporting even had the better chances. And now it's uh, it's over a week, week or so ago. But I think they hit very, very, very early on, on the post. Um, and, you know, whenever they had an attack, the few attacks that they had, they were actually quite dangerous. Uh, but the game broke them very late on when a handball, I think in the box by Pedro Porro, was, of course, a, decisive, uh, a penalty. Then everything got completely out of control. Uribe slots home, 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 home penalty. Settles the game for Porto, which I think at that point, okay, 
that would have been an okay scoreline. That they get another penalty, again, no discussion about that, makes the scoreline 3-0. Uh, that meant the game was, it was never 3-0, and then lay, later on there was even a fourth goal score, which I actually thought when I made the video, <laughs> the short video, that, uh, that, that it counted, but fortunately it did not count, because 4-0 was never the scoreline. I think this was more a 1-0, 2-1 game, to be honest. But yeah, pretty big win for Porto. Another big win, of course, for Braga over Maritimo. And we will actually see that Braga also enjoys a really, really, really good start to all this season. Yeah, I should have gotten a Braga jersey. Maybe I will still get a Braga jersey sooner or later. Now, on the uh, following uh, match, match we had Benfica easily disposing of Boavista, which is all that I expected. I really like Boavista for the jerseys and and and, and so on, but I don't, at, at, at the moment they're a team in major trouble. Uh, and you know Morato and João Mario Mario uh, with two 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 goals. As I said, watch this space for Benfica, and I know they're playing this evening. We saw the empty slot on the previous slide. Uh, their home game passes, but I don't expect anything else but a clear win. What I did not expect is that Sporting, after having this shock. You know, a tough loss, not shock loss, tough loss that they get a shock loss against newly promoted Chavez at home. That I did not see coming at, at, at all. Two goals, 60s and 63rd, so in short succession of each other, settled the game. Um, it was goal scorers were Vittoria and Juninho, uh, just to, for completeness sakes. Uh, that to me means that Sporting officially are now in trouble and probably out of the title race already. Because the top teams don't lose too many games. And if you lose a head-to-head -head and you lose a game that you actually should get three points, that usually does not bode well. That's exactly the way that Mafika kind of fell off early on last season and never could recover from, from there. What mitigated the loss, though, is that Porto also lost. But before that, again, Braga with another goal exploit. Six goals against Aruca. Yes, they're not the best of opponents, but 11 goals in two games that's pretty impressive and maybe we really have to look into Braga as a potential Champions League contender I really would hope so to jig things a little bit up in Portugal because uh, that's a league that has been dominated by two teams it was so great to see Sporting get, get in it would be nice to Braga join up with the top forces I'm not calling it yet but it would be a really really nice thing to see Porto at Rio Ave again a promoted side uh, that they lose 3-1, I did not expect that. Uh, they were 3-0 down at the half. Assis uh, scoring two and Amaral again assisted by Assis getting uh, the third one. It was very, very nice. The 22nd, 33rd, my 43rd. Should have been 44th minute. Assis, why can't you wait? Uh, Taremi, who is a player I don't have a high opinion of. I think he brings something to the table, but I find him one of the more frustrating players in the sense that he does not do good decisions very, very, very often. He misses a penalty and only stoppage time. Martinez pulls one back for Porto. As I said, shock loss. I also find a shock in the Vittoria de Guimaraes lose at home to Casa Pia. So all three promoted teams getting wins this weekend against well-established teams. That's very, very, very remarkable. You don't see that very often, especially in other other leagues where promoted teams really are in trouble. So current standings, as I say, it's or early doors. Of course, Braga flying up high. Yes, they dropped a point against Sporting, 3-3. Three, three. Those are the only three goals they have con conceded so far, and they score 11. It, uh, oh no, more. <laughs> they score even more than that. It is at, they are absolutely flying high. I really rate them at this moment, as I do Benfica. I think at this moment I would ac 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 actually um, put that Benfica might actually win the title, although the expected uh, expectations say still Porto. We see Sporting down in 13th, and if we look at on the right side at the uh, performance bars. Uh, the big one is Santa Clara, but Sporting really, really ne negative. Portimonense is really high up there, and Braga, uh, as well as Casa Pia, are positive surprises. Again, since it is so early, and we see already uh, in the adjusted sense, I think that Benfica with the game less is, of course, ahead of Braga because a higher points average. But since it is so early, we also need to look at the expected standings. Still, Porto by, by a hair. Because that loss, that might have been just enough to give Benfica a real, real boost. Again, they will play this evening. Uh, and every, everything I may say may go wrong, but I do not really expect it. And 
Portugal is probably the, one of the few leagues where every match day, everything below the Euro, European spots, there's big upheaval because those teams are so tight together. Um, and yeah, we have at the moment, I think all of the promoter teams are out of the expected relegation zone, which is remarkable as well. Okay, we have here the upcoming games. I said Benfica, we already talked talk about. We have Braga against Vitória de Guimarães, which is a derby. Uh... I expect a pretty big win by, by Braga, but it might just not be Sporting Camp bounce back against Sturil. Um, and we have Benfica against Vizela already on Friday because they're preparing for the champ, Champions League. So kind of uh, a tense, tense schedule for them already. Gilles Vicente against Porto, also an in interesting one. Then for the upcoming round, I don't have the exact dates yet, so I put them all on Sunday for now. But watch this space. There is not a really one outstanding game. Either. Although with Chavez winning at uh, Sporting, maybe they can do something at Porto as well. I doubt it though. Okay. Moving over to Spain where, okay, this is now previous, previous weekend. It started really with, with a shocker and I hate those 10 o'clock kickers. I'm not watching any of those 10, 10 o'clock kickers because they just ruined my natural rhythm. But when I watch the highlights, Valladolid with very odd jerseys to be honest uh digging just in keeping severe at bay and then even launching the occasion can't contract and take taking the lead in the 80th minute the only thing that uh they will be not aggrieved with is that they did not bring that home reiki can get an equalizer but honestly uh there was not more in there for Sevilla. Sevilla looked like a very um anemic team in many ways, and Valladolid uh, uh, will be unfortunately a team that is gonna struggle against relegation. So, a uh, really, really, really odd one there for um, Sevilla not winning that one. Um, Real Madrid against Celta Vigo. It was a game for uh, for, uh, for a while. Yes, uh, two penalties to start the scoring. Benzema, of course, Aspas. Uh, Celta Vigo was hanging in there. However. This Real Madrid team, the Champions League win gave them a boost and despite losing Casemiro, I think they have even more talent now. They have a younger squad. I, th uh, I think this Real Madrid team, and especially with Angelotti's kind of hands-off uh, approach, it works really, really, really well. And of course, Modric scores a screamer. And then after they have Vinicius Jusio and Valverde uh, put the game away. And it's an easy 4-1 win for Real Madrid. Uh, Athletic Club, um, Berenguer gives them a win over Valencia. A Valencia team that's also, you know, has to find itself at this very, very, very moment over Athletic Club. Did deserve that win. Uh, the standout result from the uh, second round was, of course, Villarreal going to uh, the Wanda Metropolitano. I think it is now a slightly long, long name. And getting... Um, the first win for uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Villarreal coach, former Ars, Ars, Arsenal coach uh, at against Simeone. So that was was a big one. Pino in the seventh, third, and then very late on Gerard Moreno. And it was actually overall a deserved win. Villarreal underlining that, yeah, we might be for real uh, Atletico Madrid after this uh, kind of positive start against Getafe. Yeah, we'll have to see where this is going. Uh, I think there's also more trouble at Atletico than one might uh, think. I think the scoreline was a little bit too high for Barcelona against Real Sociedad, despite Lewandowski scoring the first, but Isaac, who is now at New Newcastle, comes right back to make it 1-1 and was a really open and tense game. However, it was the uh, substitutions by Xavi that changed it, especially Ansu Fati coming on and uh, also Ra uh, Rafinha. That then clearly moved the momentum towards Barcelona and Fatih uh, assisting uh, Dembele and Lewandowski and at that point the game was then a uh, done deal and then he scores a fourth one uh, to really ham ham hammer it home. Uh, with all my misgivings about how they made this squad, this Barcelona team looks like the real deal at this stage of the season. Um, then uh, let's move over to the uh, round three, so the one from the past week, we, we, we weekend, and uh, you know we have Real Betis getting a win over Sasuna Celta, bounce, bouncing back Real Sociedad, bouncing back, getting wins. Those are all three teams that could potentially go for a conference league spot or even more. Uh, Mallorca getting a win at Rayo, but uh, for me the, the the result of the round is Almeria beating Sevilla despite Sevilla again taking a lead through Oliver Torres. No, Ramazani just before the half and then Sadiq makes it 2-1 and uh, it seems like this is a totally deserved as once. 
Almeria took the lead. There was no coming back. And as I said, Sevilla is a team in trouble for sure. Uh, we are a little bit uh, disappointing. Nearly like a tough uh, Barcelona against Valladolid. A Valladolid team that said, okay, we got a point in Sevilla. I think we can throw this game uh, away. Barcelona just it should have been a higher scoreline. I mean, the way the way they often hit, hit, hit the post and Lewandowski scoring a brace, Pedri being the, his own self and then Sergio Roberto making a proper score and very late on. Um, I said it already. I think it will be between Barcelona and Madrid. Um, slight edge, I think, for Madrid. Although Madrid had some trouble against S S S S Espanol. Although they dominated the first half, José Lu just before the half equalizes. And then it was a game. And because I think Real Madrid just thought, yeah, we will win this easily. And so who comes to the rescue? Of course, Benzema comes to the rescue. Then the goal is sent off late on, uh, meaning that uh, the captain of Espanol had, had, had to go in, in the goal. And while I think he directed the ball very well. He left the goalkeeper corner wide open and Benzema knows, yeah, okay, I just need me need, need to pull it there. If you know that you're not gonna jump, at least go a little bit further to your left uh, to save the goal. But yeah, it's Benzema who saves the day. Uh, we had, of course, uh, Bilbao 4-0 over Cadiz. Also con continuing the really, really good start. I think Bilbao uh, might be... Um, I. Celta, Betis, Rasos, that Bilbao, that my, those are all, all, all teams that I could, could expect going in there. Uh, they even missed the penalty through Iñaki Williams in the 35th minute, so just to say it, and had a goal disallowed for offside. So it was rather, rather one-sided. Uh, Valencia, that was a little bit of a controversial game, I have to say, because Yunis Musa gave Valencia an early lead, but then there was a foul in the build that took forever to get sorted and in the end the goal is taken back uh, to the same time I think it's then Correa uh, a little bit later is getting sent off for Valencia but then replay said no, it was, he uh, probably he was not the last last man so he could stay also it was a rather odd game but it was a rather tense game um, Valencia with Cavani who is now signing for for them in the stands so that will be exciting probably they need such a goal scorer uh, Valencia could not, had a hard time breaking down Atletico Madrid too after being very offensive in the first round now say no no we, we're gonna go back to our old old ways and then they got a very ugly goal through Griezmann uh, who yeah Griezmann is scoring he's not great but he's scoring again it was a, of course a deflected shot and in, in the end Valencia could not find really a chance for an equalizer um, so if we look here at the standings Real Madrid up top together with Betis again Betis I don't I would be fun if they could stay longer in there but I don't think it it's more the next uh, Barcelona the Villarreal's that uh, I have much higher uh, hopes of, of of making a title challenge although it's still very much Real Madrid's to lose um, it's of course interesting of course to look at the performance bars and we see the big red bar for Sevilla not looking good Betis Overperforming Villarreal, slightly overperforming. It's interesting with the loss to uh, with the draw against Rayo. Barcelona is just as expected at this very moment. Um, expected standings, yeah, it speaks a clear language. Real, Barcelona, Atletico, and then Villarreal, and the rest is kind of for fourth place. And while I said Celta might go in there at the moment, they are kind of a, in the next tranche in a way. Upcoming games, uh, we have two rounds, there are no midweek games, so that's actually some, something nice. We have actually quite some interesting ones on Saturday. We had Super Saturday in uh, Serie A, maybe not as good, but still very interesting. We have Real Madrid against Betis. That's a, that's a rather fun game. Real Sociedad against Atletico Madrid could be interesting, and then of course we need to see what Sevilla is doing against Barcelona. That will be interesting. Um, also, Athletic Club against Espanyol could be an interesting one. Then, uh, um, clash between promoted sides, Real Valladolid and Almeria. And then the weekend thereafter, and then I probably will do another review video. There are not the big clashes in there, to be honest. So, uh, we gotta see. Maybe Real Betis against Villarreal. That's clearly the one that sticks out. Um, Atletico Madrid against uh, Celta, potentially. Uh, the big boys play against Cadiz and Mallorca. So, should, should be easy wins. Then the week after, we have a Madrid Derby, which, of course, is also interesting. So, yeah. 
That's it from me on the situation in, on the Iberian Peninsula. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel. And also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.